It looks like you have a very tattered version of the Android Hacker's Handbook. Take looks it like with you me went everywhere through that. I go. I, I always feel bad when I do one of these. I feel like I should be holding up a pristine copy. Yeah, but, but this shows that you actually read I it. I took it with it me. It looks like it's all kind of mangled. Well, this has been to be to several states. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the Android Hacker's Handbook by a large number of authors, all of whom are really pretty well known. Actually, you might guys might know Joshua J. Drake or J. Duck from yes. the um, Stage Fight Vulnerability. Um, Zach Lanier, I know from at least one podcast, I can't recall which. And then Stephen Ridley, uh, formerly of Zipiter, is a well-known hardware hacker as well. So this, there's a, a bunch of really big names in this book, and I, I apologize if I'm not mentioning them all from personal experience, but this is a serious book. This, of all the books that I've read so far, I keep saying this, each new book is a new list of, a new record number of, of notes, pages I had to write mm -hmm. just to keep this all straight. 12 pages handwritten was this one, and this was a beast. This will teach you a lot about the Android security model, app permissionings, the different attack uh, surfaces of Android, and it goes into deep detail. Uh, it's, it's great that you have so many different people because I think each one of them has a very specific area of focus. Right. But reading this is like opening a fire hose because you've got like several experts telling you everything you need to know about an entire operating system, which is great, but it's a lot to get through. Um, so it, the, the interesting things that I found in this book is that the Android attack surface as a platform is interesting and, and in some ways larger than a regular PC because all the same stuff, you know, running applications locally, that's still a problem. But you've got interesting inter-process inter calls in Android that allow you to do things like, you know, if I want to make a phone call and I click a link in my browser, how that gets sent over to a phone application, perhaps pass through okay. another app to filter whether or not that's a, there's all sorts of like little interesting inter-process things that can happen on Android that make it an interesting attack target. Not to mention it also has how many different wireless interfaces because you know, if, you've got a, if it's a phone, for example, it's got, uh, it's got a radio interface layer, which is sort of the, the black box of all the, you know, you treat it like this one separate part of the, it's like the, the baseband on a cell phone. Right, right. The, the radio interface layer is kind of an interesting complex thing because it, it handles a lot of that communications between baseband and, and main operating system. But then you've got things like NFC, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, right, yeah. uh, GPS if you wanted to go into it. That's technically uh, an attack vector, but it takes a little more work to do that, I think. Lots of really in-depth discussion on fuzzing, um, fuzzing not only the software on the device, but fuzzing over USB and fuzzing USB itself. The list goes on. I learned a lot about ARM. I had never known anything about ARM processors right. and how they have different modes. Um, good refresher on uh, return-oriented programming and exploit mitigations. There's some interesting stuff that happens in Android.